Good day, fellow investors. I've just started researching the world small cap index and looking at the first 50, which are the best stocks out there, I have found a pattern that gives us 5 to 10x stocks. At least you know what to look for. The formula is the following. You don't need crazy things. If revenues just double in 10 years, that's revenue growth of just 7.2% per year. There is then a little bit of improvement of margins, which means that it is a good business. So that net income, let's say triples in 10 years. There are buybacks or dividends that return capital show that the business is healthy, making cash, which then allows for dividend increases or dividend per share increase of 4x or earnings per share of 4x thanks to buybacks or dividends. That means that you have a great business in your hands, the market recognizes it, and then also what Peter Lynch says in his book, it gets an valuation expansion of, let's say, if the price earnings ratio is 10, it often goes to 20. And then on top of everything good, you also have a valuation expansion because the market now sees it as a good business. And the result is 4x in business development over 10 years, 2x in valuation, and that's an 8x, 5 to 10x, depending on the current situation in the market. And that is an investment return of 23% per year based on revenue growth of 7%. So in this video, I'll discuss the small cap index where I'm looking for such businesses, give you about seven examples of how I created this pattern, dig deeper into the formula and discuss where to look, what are the industries, the modes, the requirements, how those businesses expand to mergers and acquisitions usually, which is a very good thing when done well, and also share my research process and why am I looking at all the 3,500 companies of the MSCI World Small Cap Index. If you enjoyed this video, if you get value from this, please don't let that like button remain a small cap. So let's immediately start by discussing the iShares MSCI World Small Cap Index. I have started looking at the small caps and if you want to get to 30 billion, Warren Buffett says, I'd start with the A's. I would start, I would start going right through companies and I, I probably would focus on smaller companies because I would be working with smaller sums and there's more chance that something is overlooked. So I have started with the A's, the first 50 by market capitalization, not really with the A's, but the highest market capitalization in the index. And those are usually the best companies, the companies that did best over the last period, thus have the largest weight in the index. And I will look at all 3,518. Before this video, I did the first 50. I already done more when this video comes out. And that's what I usually do. I will put a link into the description below. It will be on free preview on my stock market research platform. So you can check everything there. You just scroll down to the curriculum of my research. And if you go here, it will be available for everyone. You can see my notes on the first 50 of the small caps indexes. And why small caps? Well, small caps over the times that performance is measured have performed the best. This is from Farm and French, the data and small cap value performs usually the best over the long term. And that's why also I think this formula gives value and it is better to look for small cap value for good investments. Here you can see also the difference in performance. So this is significantly different. And if we can then eliminate the bad and find the good, this performance can be even better. As they say, it pays to think small when it comes to investing. Plus, at the moment, small caps over the last 10 years, because of what the Fed is doing and everything, didn't perform as it was the case in the past, which means there might be still opportunities there. But I've looked at the first 50 and in general, all of them are pretty expensive. But I really enjoyed it because I have seen what the small caps offer, what are the opportunities and what I have to look into next to find those that will be the top 
50 of the small cap index in the next five to 10 years. I need those, not the, those that are already at the top. So let's immediately start with the examples. So you can just click here and here we are the first 50. And one of the good business examples is already Quanta Services. And I have analyzed this already back last year, thinking April of 2020. And when I looked at this, I said, okay, it's a good business. It is in the utility electric. So it is good from that perspective of renewables. There is growth in the sector, which is always positive, but the stock didn't do much back then. However, I said that the cash flows are good. And that's also the first sign of future good investments where the free cash flow to market capitalization is around 10. And you can see the company has increased earnings by 27% over the past years. The stock didn't go anything, anywhere. Everything looked really, really great, except it is in a cycle. So these constructions is always cyclical, but they have done buybacks. So they have bought back half of the current market capitalization and I have put it on the watch list. If we look at the stock, it did really, really well. This is a free X over the longer run, 5x over 5 years, and even more longer term. But when you look at the business, it didn't do really, really much. There was an acquisition here, and without that acquisition, they didn't really grow much, but they have almost doubled net income over the last years. They have significantly lowered the number of shares outstanding, which means that the earnings per share have more than doubled. And the cash flows are positive. And the result is this explosion here. I have also better examples. So the first thing to look is, as I said, stable cash flows, slow but steady growth, buybacks, which means that the business is profitable, strong, and creates value for shareholders, buybacks or dividends that really allow you to or reinvest or get higher earnings per share that give them a great stock price result. Next company that did really, really well over the last years, Trex company. This is almost a hundred bagger over 10 years. And this company does wooden alternative decking products. So now it is really, really expensive, but you can see there wasn't a staggering improvement. The business model was profitable, free cash flow was profitable. And now as the sector is crazy, they have really exploded. But here the growth was a double over six, seven years. And you can see here how from six, it went to 48 before the current craze about wood decking products that we are in now. So this is currently peak cycle and very expensive, but I'm focused on this thing. So slow and steady, a 10 bagger here on positive free cash flows. And of course, you can see here buybacks. Another good example is Greco. So American manufacturer of fluid handling systems and products based in Minneapolis. If we look at the numbers, so the revenue just doubled a little bit more over the last 10 years, net income tripled, the number of shares a little bit down and cash flows just tripled. What did the stock do over the last 10 years? It is a 5x, a little bit more. That is not bad. And you can see here focused on the growth. So a little bit of inflation, a little bit of strategic initiatives, and then a little bit of acquisitions plus organic growth. And here they get their mix that sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but gives you the 7% growth through a cycle. And that is all you need for a good investment. And you can see here how they make, and most of these businesses make these small constant acquisitions that they then 
consolidate into their business. So if you have a large customer base, you buy a small producer or something, and then you sell their product to a larger customer base, a little bit higher margins, better production, better margins, scale, and then they do this in these niche businesses where if you are a graduate at Stanford, Harvard, you say, I want to go to work for Facebook. Nobody wants to work in fluid pistols or something like that. And therefore, as also Peter Lynch says, it is those niche businesses that nobody wants to go. But there is the money and slow and steady long term, you can focus on the earnings and make money. Another company that did really, really well over the last years is Carlyle. And you can see the stock price doing really, really well, slow and steady over time, a little bit down in the cycle, so time to buy in the negative part of the cycle, but slow and steady compounding growth over time. But if you look at their businesses, no magic there. 1.5 increase in revenue, a double in net income, Okay, 25% less in shares, that allows for a triple in the dividend over 10 years, good triple in free cash flows, and over 10 years, this is much more than a triple. This is a 6x, a really good 6x, and there is also a small dividend yield. Another business that will never see a recession, of course, are funeral services. So a lot of small businesses and then when a bigger business comes and starts consolidating, it allows for growth, scales, profits, and that is also what works in the business. And you can see I wrote here stock 10x, revenue not even 2x, net income 4x, dividend 4x, buybacks, growing dividends, but price to free cash flow was 10% in 2010. And that is also key, the price you are paying now the top 50 of the small cap index have a price to free cash flow of 30. So a free cash flow yield of 3%. And there is a huge difference if it is 10%, 7, 10%, 15, rather than 3%. If you can wait for these good businesses at a 10% free cash flow yield, then it's very, very likely you'll get a great return. Toro here, another great example of real, real, really big expansion. The P ratio now is 25, but if you look at the revenue, it just doubled over the last 10 years. Dividends quintupled because they did some buybacks, allowed for higher cash flows, and that is the story. You don't need stellar dividend growth. And that's also what they do. Invest in growth and they buy turf links, so land mourners, robotics, whatever they can sell within their network and they focus on operating and growth needs but also returns or shareholders. Another example Middle B, so this is a hundred bagger example over a little bit more than 10 years. This is almost 20 years, but you can see here a little bit faster growth. So this is 4x in growth, net income also 4x, shares stable, and cash flows also 4x. So 4x in 10 years, and the stock is almost a 10x in 10 years. What they do is kitchen appliances and they are consolidating into that market, buying all these other brands and then scaling those brands and offering more selection to their customers so that you know where to go if you have to buy something like this. And if you look at the acquisitions, look at the number of smaller acquisitions and brands they do over a few years. So they constantly add, add and expand with their network and this works really, really well for them. And one that isn't that expensive that might be very interesting to come back to is Barry. And you can see here how they really grew. Net income, revenue also is growing 
faster. But free cash flows here are around 900 million. If I compare that to the market cap, here we have a price to free cash flow of 10, which means a free cash flow yield of 10%. And if the company continues with just a 2x of revenue, improvement in net income, buybacks, you can see a 5x. This is the example of, okay, this is what I'm looking for. And I have put it on hold. When I do first 500, I'll go deeper into the top five that offer such potential. And Barry is the first one that does. And the company does, again, a simple niche, boring industry that you don't want to go as a graduate genius. So they do this plastics, food and beverage specialties, distribution. They have seen growth in cash flow from operations. So they are in a good place and they are using the cash flows for capital, spending and investing half of that for maintenance, looking to reduce costs to improve margins, as I said, and also for growth. Both mergers and acquisitions. So acquisitions, divestitures, growth and scale focused, 400 million buybacks on the 9 billion market cap is already significant plus dividends. And if they can keep their market share, they should do good. The formula, so no hype business, niche industry, a little bit boring that everyone invested in electric vehicles and all those hype things would say, oh, this is boring, probably never had sex in their life, <laughs> but profitable from the start, which really lowers the risk of getting sexual diseases. And if you can find them at the price to free cash flow of 7 to 15, then you are look looking at really, really interesting things. And then if you see also the cycle, where they are in the cycle, buy at the low cycle, you are looking at a good return. Growth is key, both organic, both cost price, cost in price increases and cost reductions for improving margins, small acquisitions, not expensive, crazy, small acquisitions, smart capital allocation. So if there are no opportunities, let's do buybacks if those are cheap and if not, do dividends. And the key is that the market doesn't really care for the stock until it already happens. So the market will see, oh, this is now a good business. Look at the growth, look at the free cash flows, and then the stock price will go up. If you can find it at a cycle, a business cycle, a sector cycle that says now it's not so good, it doesn't look as good, but it has all the fundamentals to do good, then you're likely looking at a 5 to 10x investment. And that is exactly what I'm looking for. And what happens to the stock? Well, if you start with the price earnings ratio of 10 and the market sees that it is a great business, well, when 2x revenues, 3x net income, 4x dividend, then the valuation also 2x and you have an 8x in your hands on a niche boring business, which is 23% per year over a decade. Not a bad thing. And that's exactly what I'm doing. That's why I'm looking at the whole 3,500, focus on those niche businesses, long runway ahead, smart management, doing buybacks, doing mergers and acquisitions, really growing that business in a niche that is not that interested to others. Thanks for watching. Smash that like button if you liked the formula. Subscribe if you haven't and I'll see you in the next video.